that I could spare your pain. She's at the age now where the hunts will be cub hunting, where the hunt will surround the area and put the dogs in so that they learn to chase and kill foxes. Your spirit is a light beyond cruelty. Oh, if only dreams came true. Oh, if only I could save you. people who don't know what hunting's about, why it's important to be able to chase an animal and not chase a trail. It's important for the hounds, it's important for the work of the countryside, it's important for balance in the countryside, uh, it's, important for, uh, it's important for freedom. After 700 hours of bitter argument, Parliament passed the Hunting Act. Chasing and killing wild animals with dogs was banned. It's only a symbolic ban, at least that said something, you know, like all the other things that used to be acceptable, like cock fighting and dog fighting and badger baiting and... The House of Commons finally dared to outlaw one of the last vestiges of aristocratic privilege. I sympathise with both sides. I can understand the people who wanted to stop it. But it was a great tradition. It was a very colourful tradition. And to country people... 40,000 hunters signed a pledge to defy the law and the countryside went to war. They just see the nice bit, don't they? The horse ride and the red coat. They don't see the horrendous torture that goes on. Some hunters said they would do all it takes. And the level of conflict escalated. With tragic consequences. I said to him, we're going now. Could you move out of the way, please? And then all he said to me was, you're going nowhere. And the argument rages on to the very heart of British society and government. Our new Prime Minister is pledged to repealing the ban. I had no idea of what I'd find politically when I started out on this. It just seems unbelievable that at this time, with all the problems that we're facing as a country and as an economy, that he, it should even be part of the political agenda. But it's only explained if you look into both David Cameron's background and the power and influence of the hunting community and the strength of their intention to get a democratic law overturned. Well, this is where it started, in this beautiful, peaceful place where we live. It was such a lovely day that I'd taken my neighbour up to visit the little grave we'd made for her beloved cat, who died a little while before, and we'd buried it up on the hill up there. We went and sat up by her cat's grave and she put some little mementos on it and we talked about how lucky we were to live in a place like this. We'd had a 
beautiful half hour sitting up there listening to this sound and saying with the terrible sadness of losing animals and the trials of life, we've at least got this place. And then on the way down, all hell broke loose. It was a hideous yowling, snarling. There were animals rushing about, barking and snarling, and then this terrible screaming. And you couldn't see what it was. It was just this horrendous noise. And it was clear something was being attacked and killed. Through no choice of my own, I had been forced to witness a brutal and bloody event, and I needed to understand why. Against all my natural instincts, I set off on a journey of discovery to ask the question, is it necessary, acceptable or justifiable to kill wild animals in the name of sport and tradition? We're going to meet a group of hunt saboteurs Everything they organise is last minute and relies on intelligence they're getting about which hunts are where. These are the Pusey Saps, members of the UK-wide Hunt Saboteurs Association, formed in 1963. They say their sole aim is to save the lives of hunted animals using non-violent direct action. Hello. 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 Michael, Elaine. Sorry. Hello. We all call each other Sabs. Oh, yeah, when we're out in the field, we just shake Sab to one another. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's anything, cool. Is anything yeah. going to kick off? Somebody riding behind you or any confrontation up in front, we usually warm one another by just shouting, hey, Sabs, and everybody will look round, you know. You want to go right, Rob? Right. Come on. Yeah, that's where they are. They're right. Oh, look, they're yeah, there. there they are. There's My first up-close experience of a hunt and I'm terrified of what I might see. I think there's a whip required at the back as well. So how do you use the whip? Well, basically, um, you crack it and you, you, you rake the hands. Oh, because that's they're trained for that. Yeah, one, to physically stop the pie. Two, oh, so, yeah, you, what you no, need I really is to get in front and stop the lead hand. They recognise what a whip crack is. Ah, uh, cheers, Billy. They will, they will stop. So you're actually setting out like to interfere with what they're doing as well as if it's illegal. Yes. If it's illegal, then yes, we will interfere with it. Mick has been a hunt saboteur for 50 years. What makes him do it? The huntsman stood at one end of the bridge to stop the fox coming out, and he sent the hounds in the other side. And I can remember the yapping, the screaming, the fox screaming and whining. I can remember the hounds pulling him out from underneath. I can remember him being pulled apart. I remember seeing the blood and the violence, and it, and it upsets me. <laughs> Somebody's got to be out there to stop it. When I started to investigate it, after we had the hounds come through Elkham. I was really shocked to discover it happens all over the country and it's one of the better kept secrets about hunting that it happens every season, probably with most hunts because they can't control the hounds. Amanda Richardson's story in her local paper. Molly and I had been together for 12 years. She was oh. a rescue cat. I got oh, her from the she? RSPCA. She was born to be round. And when she washed, she made these wonderful forms and she was just yeah. a, a loving domestic moggy. Oh. And she just liked people. So She'd she rush up and m m meet people when they came to the door. The Countryside Alliance, which campaigns for repeal of the hunting ban, has stated that relative to days hunted, intrusions are rare. From time to time, there is a regrettable incident. It was such a terrible way to die. 
usually with a hunt. You, you get the, the clatter of hooves, the blowing of horns, the barking of dogs. And the strange thing was, it was completely silent. These hounds have a hundred years of breeding, and once they pick up the scent of a fox, off they go. And then a dozen hounds burst out of the woodland, and they sent me spinning. I just literally was turned round like this, and they must have made a dash for it because by the time I, I had steadied myself, everyone had gone. Then I heard the, this yappy barking. <laughs> and they were all clustered around the greenhouse here and must have been four or five of them. They'd caught my cat Molly and they had picked her up physically and they'd sunk their jaws into her all around and they were literally just ripping her apart. And, and I, knew, I knew she must be dead, and, but, but I had to make them stop. In the evening, after dark, the master of the hunt came round to apologise. He offered Amanda money, which she refused, and he couldn't promise that it wouldn't happen again. People just started to tell me incidents and some of them very, very horrifying incidents that people had not forgotten their entire lives. And then I started to look and it just accumulated into a list of horrors that were happening all the time. They came up the driveway and pinned the cat against the garage door and massacred it. According to a witness, gobbets of flesh were left for the children to pick their way through on their way out of school. OK, well, I'd encourage you to report this to the police. Parents watched in horror as hunt dogs, one dripping with blood, rampaged through a children's Halloween event on Tuesday. It seems to me like a sort of hidden world I've uncovered, and it was like something I didn't know about, that people were upset and distressed by hunting incidents, because it's not something that's in the public eye, really, is it? We find ourselves sort of covering our eyes whilst yeah. sort of trying to half-watch the videos and pictures through. The League Against Cruel Sports holds thousands of pictures collected by their monitors or sent in by the public. Evidence, they say, of the cruelty of hunting with dogs. So I disemboweled quite a lot of them. Mm. Yeah, there's no um, quick death there. No. Yes, that looks like someone with a trophy. These pictures were all taken before the ban. <sighs> and with um, a repeal, this will be perfectly legal yeah. to do this. This 1987 image shows a lactating vixen dug out by terrier men. After the picture was taken, she was released to the hounds. Her cubs had already been killed. Pre-ban, when, when this was legal, it's something that they're proud of, you know? Killing a fox at the end of the hunt is their trophy for the day. Yeah. That's what they aim to do. And so anything they can do to document that, that's a proud moment for them. So they might show a picture like that, for example, as so. Mm. Yeah. A token of a good day out. Yeah. On traditional occasions like opening meat and Boxing Day, hunts put on a show for press and public. This is Laycock, a favourite backdrop for period television dramas too. Would you be prepared to make a few comments about what the ban has meant to you on camera? The ban has meant an increase in support for hunting, as you can see here. Does it make a difference? Is this being filmed? Yes, yes. We'll have to cut that bit out. 
Guidance from the Countryside Alliance instructs hunters being interviewed for television to remove your hat, be pleasant, smile and look directly into the camera. Could you tell me again what the ban has meant to you personally, to your hunt? Uh, it's meant we've been severely restricted in what we do, but in fact, as you can see here today, it's significantly increased support for hunting in all its forms, uh, and we are doing everything we can within the, um, the letter of the law. It's going to make a difference having the ban repealed to Absolutely. your Absolutely. Uh, we won't have to live under the tyranny of a law that doesn't work, doesn't do what it was intended to do, um, and has proved to be an, op an operational farce. So can you explain to people who don't know what hunting's about why it's important to be able to chase an animal and not chase a trail? It's important for the hounds, it's important for the work of the countryside, it's important for balance in the countryside, uh, it's, important for, uh, it's important for freedom. And the, whole, the whole thing is built on what uh, people in this country have been able to do for many, many years. If that's what happens on a hunt, will that happen again when hunting's made legal again? I've no idea where his pictures have come from, and, and they've clearly been doctored, so I can't, I, can't, I can't comment on them. We've no idea where they came from. This is what will happen when the ban is repealed. That's what really we were interested in knowing. We were no longer welcome. And supporters are called in to deal with us. I think the public would like to know. The public aren't interested in you, madam. There's more of them than you. Is that one you killed yourself? Yeah. Perhaps you'd like to say what will happen after the ban, then, if you think this is incorrect, what will happen to foxes well, is after the ban? Is that any different than a fox that's been shot? Well, how do you know that's not been shot? How could you tell? Well, you can't. Well, so, they're still allowed to shoot shots, aren't you? Well, do you mean after the ban, foxes will only be shot, or will they be killed by hounds? If a hound gets the back of a fox, it's gone dead on instantly. The animals in the pictures seemed irrelevant to them. They just dismissed my concerns and questions. I've been told there's aliens, but I haven't ever seen one. No matter what you hear. They had an answer for everything, but more than anything, I could feel their undisguised aggression. Reporter Tristram Cork said I was brave. Brave strokes, bloody foolish. Who, me? <laughs> lots of people go to these meets and lots of people enjoy the spectacle. Uh, they enjoy having an occasion and they, they clearly feel they're part of something, which is a traditional English activity, and they're undoubtedly an occasion and very theatrical. But, of course, they are very reluctant to look behind that and all the propaganda about hunting acts to prevent them looking behind that image. It's a complete split in reality. Roar, oh, the horns they blow, the gentry to the hunting goes, they gallop over the road. The hunt say that the turnout for the traditional meets demonstrates overwhelming public support for hunting. But two consecutive Mori polls show that at least 70% of people who live in the country want to keep the ban. Hunter and outspoken supporter of blood sports, Baroness Malilieu, describes how hunting tradition sees and portrays itself. Hunting is our music. It is our poetry. It is our art. It is our pleasure. We're going to see a lady who's called the League Against Cruel Sports Crime Watch switchboard a number of times. And we're going to see why that is and what's happened to her. Golly. They just find a little opening and push and push and push with their bodies until they've made a, a decent opening under the fence. And then all the others have come in and they're obviously sniffing something there. They've found something. So that's obviously a fox or an animal, some animal, um, that they're, they're sniffing there. Norma and Paul have been suffering hound trespass and damage to their property for 10 years. Probably 15 times a year, 
always a lot of dogs. I've seen as many as 50 dogs in the orchard. Uh, they've been stuck on the fence, under the fence. They've been in the greenhouse and knocked everything over, broke glass. They've gone over newly planted flower beds in the spring. They damage the fences. They say they'll come and repair them if you ask the police to have a word with them, but they never do. We've actually had followers walking down our drive and you say, can I help you? And they just look at you and don't answer, just look at you. They don't say, answer. You shouldn't be there, you know, you're there on your property. On each occasion, Norma informs the police, but they say, as trespass is a civil offence, they are unable to do anything about the intrusions. It's the hunters on the horses coming at the bottom gate and right up here, and the hounds are following them, and then the hounds have obviously pushed that wire up there. Yes, you can see where it's all pressed up from the bottom. Yeah. So they're on, must have been onto something oh, to absolutely. be determined to get through. And then it was in there where I heard them what attacking did something. It was just a terrible, like, a skirmish, dogs barking, something screaming, and it's horrible. I mean, it's a sound you just never want to hear. And, uh, you know, something's been ripped apart. So I was just the other side of the, um, of the fence, but I couldn't see, but I could hear it. And, you know, that was really upsetting. I'm not saying, you know, that they are hunting an animal, but they're obviously following some scent or other across here. And if I call out to them and say, you know, oh, get the dogs out of here, they just ride past. They don't even look across. They don't speak to you at all? No. The nearest to, uh, to a conversation was this last incident was with one of the uh, followers, you know, um, it was a lady on a horse, and I was at the gate. And I said, you've damaged the fences, you know. And she just said, send me the bill, and rode up. There's nobody to control them. They just do whatever they like. It's not just the fox. They'll chase anything that's on the move. They just wipe the area out completely when they come through. You don't see the regular wildlife until about a week later, and they slowly come back into where they know, but they just enter the area for a few days because they're that frightened. It's just... <laughs> just you're just churning, churning inside, you know, and your heart's beating and you think, oh, I just don't want this happening. So your life's quite affected yeah. by yeah. this regular yeah. threat of something yeah. happening. Yeah. I'm thinking, right, what must I do? Shut the gate, make sure the fish are covered up, keep the dogs in. I'd better not go shopping today. My whole day, you know, revolves around it. I'd better stay in just to make sure nothing, you know, untoward happens. If your boundaries don't exist, you're very vulnerable. You feel you can't stop them, you feel defenceless, you feel constantly stressed and anxious about it. If they were to apologise completely and say they would make absolutely sure that they would never ever do it again and they stood by that, you would have a different picture of a, a, any hunting incident, even if it was a bad one. But what's common to these incidents is that nobody ever seems to get that assurance other people's property is in fact a secondary consideration and hunting is the first consideration. Hunting philosopher Roger Scruton contends the event involves a collective renunciation of the usual laws of property. The hunt is repossessing the country as a common habitat. It is reawakening the collective sense of territory, an experience once vital to human survival. Farmers, smallholders, tenants, vicars, and even laborers would be invited to join in an activity that crucially depended on their consent. We were sticking with the sabs all day, 
following the hunt as best we could. Mick claimed they were still hunting, just as before the ban. All the field has gone down into this particular field. It looks as though they're going to do this wood, but they're not coming up the top here at the moment. It looks as though they're going to go down to the bottom of it. Hunts claim their post-ban activities are legal. They say they are mock hunting, using techniques designed to closely resemble traditional hunting. A fox will hide in tight undergrowth, and he, he literally has to be forced out by the hounds. And if we can keep up with them and keep them on the move, this will stop them moving the fox out of its cover. A key part of such traditional hunting is played by the terrier man. A report from I-4 describes their role. Many hunted foxes escape from the hounds and go to ground, down a hole or burrow. Often, terriers are sent into the hole or burrow to locate the fox. The terrier may hold the fox at bay for a considerable period while the terrier men dig down to the fox. They're, they're blocking us in, they're slowing us down so as, uh, we can't get up with the hounds. We've got the horses as well now. This is another deliberate tactic. They do not want us catching up with the hunt because they don't want anything filmed. The official explanation for the presence of the terrier men is that they are laying trails. I'm was feeling I'd gone into a world that was completely upside down. And there was this sinister violence and cruelty, but people were saying it wasn't happening. It was like a hall of mirrors, a dark, dark world that I was getting more and more into. And I was really dreading it. The master and his hunt staff took out the entire pack. About a dozen of them first-year pups. We made for a small wood where the master knew there was a litter of cubs. The 30 or so people involved surrounded the wood. After which the hounds and the hunt staff went into the thickets. I didn't really know whether hunting had a, a valid purpose. I assumed it did, but I wanted to go out and see what was going on. And I realised that fox hunting was simply a sport, a blood sport, and therefore I've continued ever since with trying to capture um, footage, mainly video footage, any evidence, any way that we could present to the media and the public and the police um, of the terrible things that go on out there. In 1998, the cruelty of cub hunting. Um, there's another That's one. That's this one. That's yeah. that one there. Then riding roughshod. Films made or endorsed by power protect our wild animals have been shown to MPs and used as evidence in support of the ban. Peter has been out filming hunts almost every week for 16 years. I hate them chasing foxes and killing them, I'm also motivated by the, the incredible antisocial behaviour of these people. How everybody has to work round them on the way they get onto the roads, the way they get into people's gardens, the way sometimes they kill people's pets. The bear nuisance to you, madam, we're anti-hunt. Well, actually, I'm, I'm not actually anti-hunt, but I've just had them smashing down my flowers and trying to break over the fence. Because I think my cat's being chased by them somewhere. Do you? They're all up here, all at the back of the garden. Right, let's have a... Here they are, look. Oh, yeah, in my God, grief. Go on, you can go in. Oh, yeah. Go on. Oh. Excuse me. It's because your hounds have killed them. I'm 
very sorry. And my, ch my children play in the garden. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. You say sorry, but you couldn't care less. You do, not right. You don't. I would, honestly. What would you have said if it had killed my dog? I don't know. It's not just going to be done. We would have to sort it out. Yeah. The heartbreak, you cannot sort out. The Countryside Alliance's hunting handbook gives guidance on how to deal with monitors. A ploy is to say that we are filming children. The word paedophile not infrequently comes out. You're not filming children. Oh, so I'm oh, not okay. filming so children. So you're filming the building. I'm, I'm filming, filming I'm, the children. I'm filming the general view. Uh, I was going to say. What are you doing? Oi, stop filming any old children, you pervert. Yeah, I'll take your bloody name and I'll take your bloody face and I'll put it on a paedophile website. See what you think. I don't want my husband or child on your video. I'm not interested in your husband or child. But you don't know who my husband is. They are not going to be stopped from what they are doing. It's not just because they are um, uh, excited so much by the chase. Um, that's a very strong motivation. But it's also the motivation that you're not going to, people like you or nobody, is going to stop us doing what we want. So I warn you, Mr Prideau has asked me to protect his land and I will do it. I will have you, I will. I will hit you if you touch me. Let go. Let go. You are touching me, sir. Good boy. No, would you, for God's sake. Woohoo. Don't mind. Wonderful people, aren't they? Just because you walked into yes. a field. Well, it did come down hard on my head. You are not welcome here. Please leave this land. Dig it out there. A minority pastime. A dirty little secret known all over the world. What One thing for sure, film. it's not made out of good Please times. Shut your fucking mouth, yeah? You'll see them coming. All red coats, high hopes, big bad ways to kill folks. Scared folks is running. It's just lovely for hunters to be against the law. Oh, it's work brilliant. <laughs> so do you feel they've all obeyed the law? Of course not. No. no. Why should they? No, it's, it's a hopeless law. No, nobody could possibly obey it. Well, it seems minorities can win. Every time we stop, they stop. And it does feel like a Russian spy movie walking towards my watcher. And as I walk towards him, he's reversing. Clearly, they don't want us to talk to them. You can put that in my face, I'll knock you out. You hear me? Hey! I'll tell you once and I'll tell you again. Ignorant, stupid old woman. Take your flipping camera away. One thing for sure, this pain divides the heart of us. So say your There's prayer. Good morning. Uh, am I talking to you? Yeah, I'm Mark Hill. I'm chairman of Hunt. This is How do you do? Morning. Secretary. How do you do? Um, this We're... is private property. Uh, public footpath, I think. Yes, I know that. It was simply a circle of death. Surely someone is willing to say publicly what the Hunt is doing out early in the morning. Early in the morning. We're coming out. This is the beginning of the season. We're hunting perfectly legally. We've got a bird of prey. We use the bird of prey to go hunting. We go hound exercising and we lay trails. Oh, oh God, no! Did you see the fox? Yes, I did. Oh, there's loads of people. Are you OK? <laughs> Amy. They're just so low for the most vile people on the planet. 